Hey YouTube, Rook here from Rook Geek Goodness, my little channel on the web for all things geeky and cool. And welcome back to the channel, guys. Welcome back to a brand new action figure and unboxing video. Now I'm shooting this video a little bit different compared to all my other action figure reviews and unboxing segments. Normally I would shoot a video in three parts. I would shoot it with an intro, I'd shoot it with the breakdown, which is kind of what you're seeing right here, and a final thoughts and conclusion portion of my videos. I decided for this video, let me try out something a little bit different. I'm gonna cut out the first portion, cut out the end portion, and focus specifically on the breakdown component of the video. That's what you guys really want to know about. So let's talk about what we're gonna be reviewing in this video. Again, if you do like this video segment series, let me know in the comment sections. Put a note in the comments if you like how this video turned out. As I mentioned, we're going to be focusing specifically on the Star Wars Black Series Carbonized Boba Fett, this guy right here. And you're going to ask yourself, well, Rook, why did you bring the Mandalorian into this beginning portion of this video? He's mainly here for reference to talk about the whole carbonizing effect. What the whole carbonized thing really kicked off was during October 2019, part of Triple Force Friday. There were four figures that were available in this carbonized effect. I have at least two of them. I got the Mandalorian here, and I got the, the uh, second sister, which was part of the Rebels uh, cartoon series, I believe. I only wanted really those two figures. Uh, that's the one that I was really chasing or gunning for when I was doing a toy hunt. But I, I'm happy I got the Mandalorian, but I wanted to show kind of what the carbonized effect looked like back then. It's very similar to what they have now. Um, but yeah, Mandalorian carbonized, great figure. Haven't reviewed it yet. Maybe down the road, not quite sure. Let's focus really right now on Bubba Fett, the main attraction, if you will. This guy was pre-ordered back in March on the Hasbro store. Price point was about $25 US. The carbonized ones are a little more expensive because it goes with different packaging and there's different sort of paint apps, more of these metallic paint apps compared to normal paint apps that you see on standard figures. We'll do a comparison near the end with, of course, the Star Wars Black Series Archive Series Bubba Fett as well, because there's lots of Bubba Fetts in the six inch scale, and it's, basically your mileage may vary of who you really want to get for your collection. So let's talk about the packaging here. I love this packaging for Bubba Fett. Looks really, really cool in this sort of shimmering green packaging. Looks neat. It does sport the carbonized kind of piece of the package art right here. It is the kind of the traditional box that you normally see for Black Series, just turned with this carbonized metallic shiny foil packaging. Uh, side over here does say, I think Boba Fett yet right there on the side, and you have Boba Fett listed right there and sort of this coppery color right there. On this side, sort of just a shiny shimmering goldish color tint. Does say Boba Fett. If you notice, there's no number designation. That means it's an exclusive figure. If you ever have a number here, it's part of the series of the Black Series, so you would know that but I do like the way this guy looks let's take him out of packaging continuing the breakdown not taking any cuts that's what I'm trying to do different with my uh, unboxing see if you guys like it when we pull out of the packaging this one will be unboxed I'm gonna keep this one off card I picked a second one up as well uh, we get him off the blister this is well, pull out of the packaging rather the, this him in the blister of course looks very good let's get him out keep of course it going you get all the great noise uh you get all the accessories he does come with three accessories we've seen these accessories before on other Boba fett figures he has of course the jet pack kind of still beaten up that's the way it's supposed to look and it has that sort of shiny shimmery effect compared to let's say this backpack right here that on the Boba fett it's a different yes this is the archive series but you can see the different of the paint apps between the two rocket packs. I do like the shiny attention to detail. It looks very, very cool. He does have his blaster. This one looks, I guess, very similar to the normal blaster. Let's take a look at that one real quick here so we can compare the blasters and see if there's really any difference between the guns. Uh, slight, not a whole lot though, but there's a slight difference. You can tell that this one here in this hand is carbonized versus this one, which is not carbonized. So you can definitely see, I've got an up close shot so you can see it. There's definitely a difference between both guns, carbonized versus non-carbonized. Um, again, I do like this carbonized treatment. I think it looks very, very neat. And of course his main gun itself, let's get that out of his hand. So this is the carbonized gun here versus the non-carbonized gun here fix it right there so there is different of the paint apps are a little bit different between both guns uh, but they do look neat it is the same accessory just with a different paint treatment it's identical the top one of course is the carbonized the bottom one is the non-carbonized so accessories aside let's really focus on Bubba Fett himself he looks very very neat love the way he looks uh, even his cape looks different it is a like i said his even his we'll take a look at the cape real quick here between the archive one and the normal one so you can see what i'm talking about uh the capes are similar 
but there's definitely a difference on, on this cape compared to this one. It has it has a different color to it. It looks even more tattered than the one I have. The one I have looks a little bit tattered, but this one looks like it's really ripped. Like they, I don't know if that's intentional, just mine. You can see all the tatters on that one compared to the tatters on this one, which is not that tattered on the archive one. So I, I think that's very, very cool that they did that. But of course, let's go back to the figure again. Um, again, this is new for me, this way I'm kind of reviewing it, kind of shooting it a little bit different than my normal traditional reviews. Uh, looks great, love those paint apps on it. It definitely does pop. Let's kind of look at him versus the normal version. So you can see kind of what I'm talking about as far as paint apps. Uh, you can see definitely the, the similarities between both figures, but the paint is absolutely giving it a lot more pop compared to what you would normally see. Uh, definitely looks very, very cool. I like the way this guy looks. Um, again, all that, the accents really stand out on the figure. Everything that's on the archive figure here is on this one. Now, let's really talk about the articulation because that's very, very important. Uh, you do have nice head ball, head joint movement here. Uh, it still seems very stiff for the head. You might be able to get some movement out of it. Arms will spin 360 on both arms here. There's not getting any hindering or clipping. You do have the Wookiee braids over here, which is what you had on this figure too. You still have the Wookiee braids. Um, articulation on the arm, you have, it looks like a single jointed elbow here. You have 360 on the wrist and there is a bend on the wrist as well. So the wrist is articulated. I do like that. Holster is still attached. You do have the kind of, you do have the carbonized holster right there compared to the other holster. Uh, it is sort of, uh, the deco of it looks dark color, but it looks very, very cool the way they did that. Uh, we will, let me put on the back of it so you see the back the way he looks. Let's plug on his backpack real quick so we can see what it looks like with the backpack in place. It looks good. Snaps on, holding okay, no issues. That's what the backpack would look. Let's do a quick comparison to the back of the figures so you can see. Very similar. Um, Height-wise, if we compare the height of the figure, let's put the arms down. Very similar in height between the two. I don't see a whole lot of uh, differences for the height of the figures. Kind of pull back a little bit so you can see it. Very, very similar between both figures for the height-wise goes. It, they, they are, again, very similar in design. They're basically the same sculpt, but this, again, paint variant versus non-paint variant. Uh, looks very cool. Um, continuing the articulation here, uh, he does spin, which is what I was hoping, 360. He had a click in that, in the chest, so hopefully that's no big deal. Um, I usually don't hear clicks when you spin a figure around like this. But it does spin, but no hindrance. I do like that. And I'm hoping that this one con uh, contains the fix with the legs. I know there was a lot of complaints with the legs getting because the way the pockets were designed on these pants, the legs would not collapse. They would be too far, too far out. They'd be sprayed like this. So they finally, I guess, addressed that and made them a little bit tighter so it'd be easier for the figure to stand without any problems, which is, I believe, what the archive figure is all about, too. This, I think, has the tweaked uh, paints, uh, tweaked uh, sculpt, rather, as well. So it looks really, really good. Um, I was hoping for double-jointed elbows, but I'm not seeing that here. I'm just seeing a single-jointed elbow. Uh, it does not been at the wrist if you're curious. He probably could, but because of this, I guess, piece of the outfit, it won't spin uh, completely 360. But that's okay. Legs, let's talk about the legs. You can hopefully get them to kick. Um, because this pouch right here, you might only have so much movement because of, this is part of the issue I think that it's either needing to be addressed or hasn't been addressed because of the way this art because of this pocket here uh, I can point it out to this one you can't get the leg out unless you maneuver this bit around the leg because of this pouch here clipping into this piece of the leg same thing holds true with the carbonized figure you're getting the same limiting hindrance right here in the legs i was hoping they did they tweak that but apparently they didn't so you might not get a whole lot of articulation coming out of these legs unless you move those pouches to the side these legs themselves can be moved sideways i mean i can get the leg going sideways like this if i wanted to but because these pouches are getting in the way it's still getting issues there now he does have a double jointed knee it does go back pretty far so you have a lot of range there uh, as far as the uh, ankles you have an up you have a down and there, uh, you have a left and right pivot and so basically you have literally almost 360 movement of these ankles so I do like that I think that's very very cool having this limitation of those legs to me 
is a real is is a shame. I really wish you didn't have that. I haven't reviewed any Boba Fett figures, so I wasn't. I heard rumors of this of this articulation problem. It is in fact true. I, I have to kind of take back or, or, or redact what I said earlier because I thought they fixed this, but in fact it's still the same problem because these pouches should have been further. If these pouches were further back on the belt, then this wouldn't have happened, or they could have maybe made these pouches that are all sculpted in smaller to allow the legs to get articulation. You can't, I mean, literally, you can't bend the figure more than this. And that is a shortcoming by the design. Now, you could you probably move the legs around and, and make them in a really cool pose and, and position the leg in a different spot? You might be able to, but just by standing the figure normally, you can't do any of that stuff. That, to me, is a shortcoming. Um, Hasbro should have saw through that. I don't know why they didn't. That, to me, is a problem. Let's put all try to put all his gear on him and see if we can get him into a decent pose. Let's put his gun in his holster. Like that, so the gun will fit in the holster, like that. The rifle is a bit difficult from what I've been seeing and watched some people do some reviews on it. They would stick it in his hand and sort of spin that, the gun backwards. Okay guys, apologies, I had to put a cut in place to get his blaster into his hands. You normally put the gun in backwards, like reverse with the stock sticking out and you spin the gun around to get it into his hands. That's what I did for the Archive Series figure over here. But all things considered, should you buy this figure? Well, if it's your very first Boba Fett, buy the Archive Series first, if you want my personal opinion. The carbonized figure, even though the packaging looks super, super cool, and it's very, very shiny, and it really sticks out in the shelf and it get a lot of attention, buy it if you already have a Boba Fett. Because again, this is more of a luxury figure. It has a higher price point because of the packaging and all these really cool paint apps, you're spending more money for this figure, about $25 as opposed to about $20 US. Now it's even harder to get it online, about $30 to maybe $35, which I checked on eBay today. The prices are usually in a $30 sweet spot to purchase this figure online. Um, it is worth the money. They are very, very cool figures. I do like the way this carbonized figure looks, especially the cape that's being all tattered. It's a different color cape compared to the cape that we see, as I mentioned before. It looks very, very cool. It, it, side by side, they look nearly identical as far as the design goes, but because of the paint apps and the way it's it's very stark and it really pops the figure, it looks very, very cool. Again, the paint apps on the back of the, the backpack, the jetpack look really cool. You have all the battle damage that we've seen before on this figure. It looks really, really good. Now, of course, the big negative we have to take with this figure between both figures is the leg problem. And then again, we talked about that before a couple minutes ago. Of course, the leg, you can get the leg out a little bit. I did a little bit more tweaking, checking the articulation. There is a thigh cut here. You can spin this leg at this thigh cut right here, but it still gets hampered rather by, or hindered rather, by this bag and the sculpting right here for this leg. So you still can't get the leg to move even if you move and twist the thigh. It's still a problem. They should have addressed this a long time ago why Hasbro is either lazy and doesn't want to tweak the, uh, the tweak the sculpt, I don't know, but it, to me, it's still a problem. But I hope you do like this video segment series, this um, first impressions, review, and unboxing. I changed it up again, guys. Let me know in the comments, should I keep doing it this way or go back to my way I did it before, which I had the intro, the breakdown, and the outro. I do hope you do like this video segment series. Remember to click the like button at the bottom of the page. Click the subscribe button, picture my face. When you subscribe to the channel, click the bell kind of to be notified of my latest videos. Of course, last but not least, you can click windows over here to watch more of my content. Take care, guys. See you next video. And bye-bye.